Hello, welcome back to Free Super Tips. We're back again for some more bet building, this time game week 21 in the Premier League. Today's show, we're going to be having Rory Jennings jump into the mix. We're going to be talking everything Chelsea. Frank Lampard, Thomas Tuchel, Tony Rudiger. It's going to go absolutely off, so stay tuned to that. But also, we're diving into the biggest game of the weekend, Manchester United's trip to the Emirates to face Arsenal. If you want to check out any more tips for Game Week 21 in the Premier League, jump over to freesupertips.com. Those guys have got you covered. And of course, let's review the bets from Game Week 19 in the Premier League. Unfortunately, we were so close to so many bets, but we came out with one winner, and that was FST's shout in the Crystal Palace versus Manchester City game. They had 3.5 City goals, and of course, Manchester City to win to nil. Congratulations to those guys. First up, to kick off the bet-building fun, we've got Everton versus Newcastle. Leeds absolutely bullied Newcastle for me for 90 minutes. Rafinha was a man in form. Played on the right-hand side. James Rodriguez, of course, plays for Everton. How are they going to contain him? Well, they're not, are they? I think that's the issue here. They're not. I can't see a world in which Newcastle get anything out of this game. And ultimately, I think they're going to go down now. It felt like that was quite a bold statement at one point, whereas I think more and more people are now thinking that that is a realistic possibility. I think their form without some maximum has been awful. He looked okay when he came against Leeds, looked a bit fresh, but still not quite match fit. If they can get him back, I think they're a completely different side, but I agree without him, they look very, very poor. And also, when you look at the teams below them starting to you know, find their feet a bit, it's worrying times for Newcastle. Then the big Sam factor is going to kick in eventually. Surely. We can all hope. Uh, but anyway, let's dive straight into the bets for this game. Rory, what have you gone with? Because this is going to be, it could be a good game. It could be a terrible game. Of course, Newcastle won 2 1 at St James's Park. Yeah, I can't see Everton having any problems here. I think it will be a very complete performance from them. And I just think that there's too much firepower in this Everton team. I heard uh, Carlo Ancelotti talking about Dominic Calvert Lewin. Did you hear that when he was talking, uh, comparing him to Inzaghi? Mm. And he was listing a lot of attributes where Calvert Lewin was better than. Inzaghi and he sort of went Inzaghi's going to kill me here um, <laughs> but it's very funny when you think about how highly uh, Ancelotti must rate Inzaghi it's a huge compliment to Calvert-Lewin and there's no way Newcastle can compete with him Interesting that you've not backed Calvert-Lewin because in my bet I've backed Calvert-Lewin to score against Newcastle he scored last time out in the 2-1 win and Everton without Luca Dean and without James Rodriguez of course this season Luca Dean's assisted Calvert-Lewin three times in the Premier League already so I think with those two back it's goal time for Calvert-Lewin as well looking at James Rodriguez that's from more of a tactical perspective I mentioned previously how Leeds kind of opened them up that first goal where Rafinha ghosted into the penalty area took a touch and simply passed it into the back of the net mm -hmm. too much space in between the lines James Rutt likes that type of move, coming onto that left foot. Not scored since his brace against Brighton back in October. It's time for James to score. Can't argue with that, Rory, can you? Certainly not. Let's take a look at FST's bet as well. They've mixed both of our bets, Rory. They've Everton to win the game and Calvert-Lewin any time. Decent. Everybody's written Newcastle off. Q and Newcastle win. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> Bang. Now on to Palace versus Wolverhampton Wanderers. Rory, did you see Wilfred Zaha's post on social media this week? I did. Slightly troubling, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit... It's upsetting for a player that should be more positive right now. He's having one of the best goal-scoring seasons he had in the Premier League. He's one goal away from equaling his best ever Premier League return. But it, fans, not great. No, I think people are getting on his back and it's clearly the pressure is telling on him. And he's reacted like that. And I think that, you know, we don't want to go into it too deeply now. But ultimately, this is a reflection of society and social media. And it seems to have had quite a severe impact on Zaha. I hope he's hope he's okay and I actually hope he gets a goal on the way. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. I hope that he, he silenced these critics yeah. and leads uh, Crystal Palace on to the win. But I could tell you, Rory, that William Jose has reached double figures for goals in his last four full La Liga seasons. He looks like the perfect type of age. A little bit like Raul Jimenez coming to Wolverhampton Wanderers. I think it'll make a similar impact. Yeah, well, they need something, don't they? Because their form since the Jimenez injury has been shoddy. Mm. At best, that's the kindest way I can put it. So I think they do need an injection of something slightly fresh. This could be it. This could very much be it. Now, let's jump back into the bet straight away. Rory, have you backed Zaha? Have you backed Crystal Palace? I have. I've gone with Palace partly due to Zaha's brilliance but also due to just the fact that Wolves seem in a very, very slippery trajectory. Mm. And I'm not sure that Palace is the ideal fixture when you're trying to get something, like desperately get something out of the game. No, I think the, that West Brom game, you know, that 3-2 defeat, mm. was quite telling on how poor defensively they've been this season because we expect Wolves to be defensively strong, to play on the counter-attack, to just get numbers behind the ball and they were just too open. Um, you know, taking a look at what you could expect from Crystal Palace, though, only West Bromwich Albion have conceded more goals in the Premier League this season. So they're surprisingly leaky this, this year. 
Is this the game where they're going to turn it around and keep a clean sheet? I think it. Look, I just think it's going to be such a tight game. I feel like it will be decided by one goal, and I just think Palace have a little bit more about them at the moment than Wolves. Let's jump onto my bet. You see, I've gone the other way, Rory. I think this could be the game for Wolves to win win the match. William Jose, I think he's going to score. I think coming into the Premier League, I think Wolves are still creating a good quality of chance, similar to Raúl Jiménez, deceptively good in the air, um, despite not being that tall, not being a six foot four mm. beast. So you're looking at Adama Traore, I think as well, if Wolves want to go to maybe two strikers and play both Fabio Silva and uh, William Jose, could be quite good. So that's nine to one. That's pretty big decent price. Bet. Yeah, good big, price. big price there. So if you think Wolves, like myself, are going to go on to win this game, back that bet builder. Let's take a look at free super tips bet builder as well. Which way have they gone? They've gone on the fence. A draw under 2.5 goals. So not one for the neutral. No, it does feel like it's going to be a very tight game, doesn't it? Now, on to Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. They face Chris Wilder's Sheffield United. But a big question here for you, Rory. Is Jao Cancelo the best fullback in the league right now? Yeah, it's not a difficult one at all to answer, is it? Yes, is the answer. I mean, he is playing uh, majestically. Uh, and I think Pep Guardiola, somebody who I've often given stick to, actually, for not having it in him to nurture talent particularly well, I think the way that he's got Jao Cancelo playing is incredible. Goals, uh, scoring, he's, yeah, he's brilliant. It's, it's really strange because he, he's used him sparingly in a sense in the first season he was at City and he's been like kind of hot and cold this season with the rotation of fullbacks but now very much at the top of his game. Just reading out a few stats from the game against West Brom, he completed 103 passes, 50 of which in the final third, completed five dribbles, three chances created, three tackles, three shots, a goal and an assist. What more could you want? In fact, Jao Cancelo completed more passes in the final third than West Brom did as a team. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, well, the, the stats that you've just read out there, they would be fairly impressive stats for an attacking midfielder. Yes. Kevin so, De Bruyne would look at those yeah, numbers exactly. and be pretty happy. Yeah. But let's jump into the bet, Rory. Have you gone with Man City or do you think Chris Wilder's going to pull off a madness? I mean, there's just only one winner here for me. There's <laughs> only one winner by as many goals as you like. I went four and a half. But it could easily be five and a half. I mean, yeah. I, just went, I just went as big as... I think my tip for this is just go as big as you like on City. I, I completely agree with that. I think City at the moment, they look dominant. You know, one thing we were chatting about previously, they, they lack a goal scorer, but it's quite spread well at the moment. Well, it... It, it's either going to be, I feel like it's either going to be a defining, fe well it will be a defining feature of their season, but it will either be the reason they win the league or the reason they don't. And that is the fact that they do not have a striker. I think it's very weird and very rare that you see a team doing so well, scoring so many goals without that pivotal mm. archetypal uh, number nine. But I think the fact that they've just got the goals spread out across the team, you need, whenever you see them play, they seem to score so many goals. But various goal scorers, mm. it's huge, isn't it? It's absolutely massive. And it's an interesting one. You think Salah Mane, you think Aguero previously for City, even Diego Costa for Chelsea. Yeah. It's always one guy that kind of comes out on top with these big teams at City are just spreading it through. So one stat I'm going to throw in here, Rory. Manchester City, over the last three games, have scored 11 goals. That's 3.66 goals per game. So you're slightly over. Let's move on to my bet, because that's exactly what I've gone with. Over 3.5. Okay. A little bit more conservative. Uh, but I'm throwing Foden to score any time. Eight shots since his last Premier League goal. I think there's one coming. And Man City, you know, they were so dominant against West, against West Brom. It will be a similar, uh, you know, proposition against Sheffield United. Let's take a look at free super tips. Bet Builder as well. See they, what they've gone with. They've gone City to win to nil, which is a good one. Yeah. 11 clean sheets in the 12 games that John Stones and Ruben Diaz have played together. <laughs> Yeah. It'd absolutely fall off. You know, who, who would have thought that at the start of the season? I know, it's amazing. The form of Stones is, is exceptional, isn't it? It bodes very well for England as well, going into yeah. a tournament, yeah. He looks so, so comfortable. Yeah. So, so comfortable. So composed as well. And, and I think the big thing is, you know, turning around Virgil van Dijk numbers in terms of Jules 1, which is something that he didn't do previously. Yeah, yeah. It just looks great. No, I love a story like that. But City to score in both halves as well. So you think it's a real hammering from FST's point of view and then Foden any time, getting on that bandwagon. I like that. I like the Foden one as well. I should, if, if I'd actually... Uh, I should put that in my own bet. <laughs> <laughs> Now onto the game that you shouldn't watch this weekend, that is West Brom Fulham. But West Brom, in fact, have conceded a lot of goals in the last few home games. Yeah, what's going on? Is that's that, not Allardyce. That is not Allardyce. Five, four, five in the last three games. Um, they've conceded 48 in the league this season. 12 more than any other team. I know. And when you watch them play, they are so uh, shoddy and just, just disjointed at the back. I watched them against Leeds fairly recently. Loads of goals went in. Watched them against Manchester City. Obviously, loads of goals went in. So this isn't Allardyce, but I rate Allardyce so highly. Mm. I truly believe that he will put it right. Yeah. And look, ultimately, I could be saying that and it, and it goes wrong again. But I would not be, I would not be putting any money on Allardyce 
to, to go down. I think the only issue is their squad is so weak for Premier League quality. If Analyze can do some movements in the market, I agree with you, they'll stay up. But it's a difficult time. I think this is the hardest one for him. You know, we said that it previously, yeah. like, you know, when he's picked up other teams like Newcastle and Disarray or whoever, mm. it's hard jobs, but I think this is the pinnacle. But anyway, let's jump into the bet straight away. Rory, what have you gone with in this game? A draw. I've gone for a draw. I just don't think you could separate them. I, I just find it very difficult to see how either team is going to have enough to get over the line. And I think that they will ultimately cancel each other out. I think Scott Parker's doing a great job there. Yeah. But look, they're going to get some points on the board at home under Allardyce. It is going to happen. So there's no reason it doesn't start here. Well, I've kind of gone the same way. This time um, I've gone even further. I've gone nil-nil. Yeah. Um, you know, goals in this game. Maybe Luckman. If there's any goal scorer, I think Luckman. He showed great movement off the ball against Manchester United in a recent Premier League game. Ran off Paul Pogba for that goal. Yeah. If there's anyone I think that could open the door, it's him. But I fully expect a nil-nil. Do you think a nil-nil suits both teams? It suits Fulham more than it suits West Brom. Yeah. I think West Brom need to win it. Fulham point of doing could, away could, from take, home. could take yeah, a point yeah. away from home. But it's a six-pointer. Classic, mm. cliche six-pointer. <laughs> Let's take a look at FST's bet for this game as well. They've gone Fulham, draw, double chance. Both teams to score, yes. So they think there's goals on the board. I do like the double chance. I like yeah. this first part of the bet. I feel like I've gone a little bit wrong. I maybe should have gone with that as well. Yeah, there's something in there, actually. Gone are the days of Vieira versus Keane. It's now Scott McTominay versus <laughs> Granite Xhaka. You know this? Arsenal versus United. Uh, no. Oh. So I think big the, words, I big, think, yeah, big I words. The interesting side with Man United and, and how they've kind of played against these bigger sides is they'll always find a way. They'll eventually find some sort of strategy that will beat Arsenal. You know, the recent results, Arsenal have arguably got the better of Manchester United under Solskjaer. Mm. But I feel that like you could catch them the same way that Man United caught Liverpool. The two wingers, staying wide, staying high, looking for the passes to each other, switching that point of attack. Mm. And I really think that United have got something. Yeah, I do as well, actually. I, look, I, th- I think that United are somehow going to win the league and it's games like this yeah. where they need to secure the points for yeah. my prediction to become correct it's games like this where they need to secure the points it's big because Arsenal in great form you know yeah. you're looking at Saka Emil Smith-Rowe Pepe who actually played really well Good against game. Southampton he scored didn't he although he, he did switch off for the goal I felt like people yeah. were very kind to him yeah. because of the way that he played and because of the goal that he scored but he was culpable for, for the Southampton goal. Yeah, it was a di- I thought it was a nice it was a nice set piece routine, but I agree with you. You know, you can't allow someone in the penalty area yeah, to have exactly. a free shot from a corner. Yeah. Uh, but I thought he, you know, I thought he played well, but not no nowhere near the levels of Saka. No. Saka at the moment is a joy to watch. Yeah, he's unbelievable, isn't he? I think he's had six goal contributions uh, in the last six games. That man, Rory, nice, very, very <laughs> nice stuff. I don't want to add that as well to the, the partnership between Emil Smith Rowe and Saka, obviously coming up at youth level. Uh, Saka has been assisted by Smith Rowe three times in the Premier League this season. That's only bettered by Bruno Fernandes assisting Rashford, Thanks. Son assisting Kane, and Kane assisting Son. There we go. So, the, you know, you're showing that partnership yeah. up and down the pitch. As well, what about Lacazette? What do you make of him? Missed a massive chance at the start of the game against Southampton. 1v1. Could have been pivotal, couldn't it? Could have been. Got big. away with it. Yeah. But, but did find himself on the score sheet. And actually, Arsenal's resurgence mm. has coincided with his mini resurgence. Yeah. So I think we actually have to view him as, bit, have, as having a fairly successful season. And is one of the biggest problems to stop Manchester United. If, Man- if this game yeah. goes wrong for United, I imagine Alexander Lacazette will be one of the reasons why. I think he's, he plays that deep line forward role really well, links the play mm. quite, you know, things that we don't kind of see with goals. But looking at his um, you know, stats over the last 10 games, he's been directly involved in eight goals in all comps. So Quality. he is contributing, but again, like he's not that clinical forward that Arsenal fans maybe want in their number mm. nine. Of course, we may even see Odegaard. Make the bench. Yes, interesting signing. Do you think that's a good one? Oh, absolutely. He's a sensational player. I don't know why Zinedine Zidane didn't play him this year. Yeah. And if Real Madrid are screaming for some creative talent for El Sociedad last season, what a player, lovely little playmaker. And I think he'll be loved by the Arsenal fans yeah. if he can hit the ground running. That's the big thing. Ceballos came to Arsenal, similar situation. I haven't really played enough. Out of form when he started. Didn't really get the management mm. in. Thinking, remember Denis Suarez? Yeah. Yeah, what is that? Well, a, a yeah. great player, but didn't hit the ground yeah. running. And I think that's the big thing with Odegaard. If maybe he can contribute in this game, um, could be a big way to start his career. But I kind of expect Manchester United with Bruno Fernandes. Like, the guy is just unbelievable. Directly involved in half of the goals in the Premier League since joining Manchester United. Oh, really? It's just. Hey, mate, here's a question for you then. I said something where I got an awful lot of stick on Twitter. Uh-oh. I said that I think Bruno Fernandes is a better player this season than Kevin De Bruyne. Everyone went crazy at me. He's having How, a, is that wild well, from me? He's having or? a better impact. Thank you. He's having an impact similar to Messi, Ronaldo, yeah, Lewandowski. Exactly. The stats are saying that since he joined the football club. I think the, the interesting side is KDB is that creator. He is their sister. He's the guy that's going to 
open up, you know, unlock the door for City that heavily dominant on possession. So you kind of you see him in the final third. He is the pinnacle. Bruno Fernandes is doing everything for Manchester United. Look, he's, he's shooting, he's scoring, yeah, he's creating, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's pressing. The stat that jumped out to me this week that was quite an interesting one is only Bamford and Kane have had more shots on goal than yeah, Bruno Fernandes. So I think that's, yeah, yeah. that's your argument there, Rory. He is more rounded than, than Kevin De Bruyne. Thank you, Dave. I there wish you we were go. here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, well, <laughs> so next time just text me, Rory. Yeah, I'll we'll, fire yeah. some information for you over. <laughs> uh, but let's move on to the bets. Have you gone with Arsenal? Have you gone with Manchester United? Can we'll draw both teams to score. <laughs> I, I, look. We can all sit on the fence, Rory. Yeah. I feel over the season you've got better at your bet building. And I like this. This is pragmatic. Yeah. This is Jose Mourinho. I was, Conte going, yeah, I was actually going for what I th- think is the most likely outcome rather than kind of the, the more glamorous. The way I hope it goes. Yes. Like, I, I want it to be a thriller. Yeah. But I think it's more likely to be a very cagey affair. Like, you've got to remember, uh, the, when, when Arsenal were at their most average, they somehow won at Old Trafford. Yeah. Like you have that has to be a factor in the decision making here. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's jump onto my bet because I have backed Manchester United in this game because I feel like they you know they've got something at the moment. Greenwood's looking maybe back in form as well, which is exciting. We already spoke about Bruno. Maybe the centre forward is a position that is still open to interpretation. Luke Shaw's looking good at left back, but under three point five goals in the game. I think that's a key yeah. be- key thing to get in any bets that you build this weekend. So you're looking at the last three Premier League games. The one this season, one 0 to Arsenal. Last season was a two 0 to Arsenal, and then a one one draw. So there's not there going to go. be many. I think it's going to be one goal. Could be a two one. Yeah. Could be a one nil. But that's what I think with how the result's going to go. Let's jump over to free super tips and see what they've gone with as well. They've got Man United draw double chance. Both teams to score and Fernandez anytime. This is just a tap That's in. the obvious one. It is the obvious yeah. one. And he's you know he's not scored recently. No, he's due. He's due, due a goal yeah. in the pro. He's due a few goals in the Premier League. So maybe this is a good bet. Draw double chance. I quite like that as well. But Arsenal, you were telling me that they're one of the form teams in the Premier League, Rory. They are, but. Manchester United, there's something about this Manchester United team this year. I'm telling you, there's something going on. Well, it will upset the form. Arsenal in the last six games, 16 points. Only Man City and um, Atletico Madrid have got more points in that run in Europe's top five league. So Arsenal, arguably, form side in the Prem. Yes, but Manchester United, uh, mate, the belief there's something going on at that club and it's worrying. Well, I hope so. (laughs) Aston Villa versus Southampton. It's just always been there, right? uh, Yes. But I think the big question I want to ask you, Rory, for this game, Jack Greenish, of course, has staked a massive, massive claim for a midfield position for England at the Euros. What about James Ward-Prowse? Fantastic player. Box to box. I think nobody scored... I think he's scored more direct free kicks than the rest of the league combined. Absolutely. But I think the thing as well, most assists as well from set pieces yeah. in the Premier League. So you get in that dual England. level where you've got a player that can do the hard yards, as you mentioned, box to box. He's an aggressive little fella. Mm. Um, but as well can provide quality from set pieces. Totally. Does this England squad have that right now? No, he is. He, he should be in the conversation at the very least. I think he, he ultimately could play for almost any club uh, in the league, aside uh, from I, potentially I, I, City. I could just see him at Liverpool one day. Yeah, really I think can. Liverpool, Arsenal would be crying out for him. Yeah. Getting the Chelsea team easily. He's yeah, a very good player. Right, let's jump into the bet straight away. Let's see what we've got here, Rory. What have you gone with here? You've got a draw, both teams score. Yes, yeah, so another defensive bet. But I see where you're coming from. Again, I just think that they're very evenly matched. And I don't think either team is going to have enough to just get over the line, but they will break each other down. You know, I'm, I kind of agree there. I've gone slightly different, but could be, both our bets could come in, Rory, because I'm backing a draw as well in this game. But I'm going Ings any time, Grealish any time. Danny Ings looks superb against Arsenal. Didn't get on the goal, <sighs> score sheet. Player. That amazy run in the penalty area, just, it, you know, it's sort of, that's what Danny Ings is. He's, he's an underrated footballer. He's, he's a, one of the most natural finishers in the league at the moment. Mm. I rate him so highly. I think he's brilliant. If he could just stay injury free, who knows where his career could end. Look, I'd absolutely take him Man United. I thought he, he, he would be a better sign of Manchester United this January if Edison Cavani wasn't at the club. I think he'd be sensational. I think United would win the league with Danny Ings. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Uh, but Jack Grealish, you got him in there as well. Uh, he's moved back to that left-hand side. Barkley's come back in at number 10. He's got a better goals-to-minutes ratio on the left wing. So I'm throwing Barkley into my bet Big as price. well. That is a big price, to be fair, but both of our bets could come in at the same time, Rory. We could be high-fiving okay. at the weekend. Let's jump over to FST's bet builder for this game. They've gone to Southampton, draw double chance, both teams to score, yes. So we're expecting goals in this game. So now on to Chelsea versus Burnley. Rory, should Chelsea have sat for at Lampard? Of course not. It makes a complete mockery of appointing him in the first place. Uh, it's a disgraceful decision from the club, but it's one that we've become accustomed to. It's one that we're used to, and the merry-go-round circus continues. Disappointing. Mate, it's, it's, it's more than disappointing. It's demoralising, it's painful, uh, and it is incorrect. Yeah. Like, you know, certain decisions, you can look at football clubs when they make them, and you can say, potentially, it's the right thing to do. This is so far 
uh, wider than Mark, that it's unreal. But we're under disgraceful ownership and this is what we expect. It's sad because Lampard did really well with a number of the young players. It's the first time I've ever seen Chelsea integrate youth into the side. Abraham, Mason Mount, Billy Gilmore this season. And it is frustrating. Um, in terms of Thomas Tuchel, of course, the future, do you think he'll succeed or do you reckon there'll be another manager that will eventually get the chop? Well, I mean, history has taught us that, there'll be, that he's ultimately going to get the sack. He'll do very well, like really well. If he does brilliantly, he lasts, what, 18 months? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. If he lasts 18 months, that is amazing at Chelsea. So... I mean, ultimately, Dave, you and I are going to be stood somewhere having a conversation about Chelsea's new manager probably within a year. Well, if you get Julian Nagelsmann next, that'll be quite good. But again, Julian, short-term contract, would he do it? Probably not, because he's working at a great club right now or a great institution with Red Bull and all the money they're funding in. It just doesn't seem right for him and he'd be someone that would be fantastic at Chelsea. Why would anybody want to come and do the Chelsea job, though? I mean, aside from just, you know, landing, earning some money, potentially winning a bit of silverware, but then you're going to be sacked. You're definitely going to be sacked. Um, and it feels like quite a thankless, heartless project at the moment. It really does. And I think the other thing as well we've got to touch on, that look, we're not even like halfway through the season in terms of, well, we're just about halfway yeah. in terms of games. Frank Lampard's had all that money in the summer. Surely you can't be sacking him after this point with the integration of all that new talent totally. that maybe he didn't want. You know, there was a lot of talk about Declan Rice. If Declan Rice was in that Chelsea midfield, Chelsea would be winning games yeah, at I counter. I agree. I think, I think that ultimately Frank Lampard was a victim of his own success because he overachieved last year, got into yeah. the Champions League. If he didn't make the Champions League, he would have preserved his job. Like Nobody yeah. expected him to make it. But because he got into the Champions League, it meant that the club suddenly spent a load of money and the club are impatient and they're asking questions why Roman Abramovich's new toys aren't working. Why is Kai Havertz not working? Why is Werner not working? And Lampard's paid the price. They're people, not toys, Rory. That's why. They're Abramovich's toys. I see them as people. He sees them as toys. Let's jump into the bets, Rory. Do you think Chelsea can beat a resurgent Burnley? Yes, I think we should. I think we should. And now let's see if the let's see if they can start scoring and start I, I playing. Do, I do like it. I do like it. You know, a German managing two Germans. That's the reason why Tuchel's manager, right? So you got Werner to score first, Havertz any time. I generally think that could happen. But let's move on to my bet. So I think with Chelsea, I'm going to be backing them for the game. I think the shape that Tuchel could bring in an attacking sense, that 3-4-2-1 we saw at PSG that worked quite well against Manchester United in the games they've played uh, against PSG under Tuchel. Overload to 4-4-2. That's what Burnley do. So I'm going to go for Chelsea to win the game. And I'm also going for any time. When, when I first saw your bet, I thought, is that my bet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're on the same line. Great think, minds, mate. Great minds. Great minds do think alike. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see the utilisation of someone like Timo Werner under Thomas Tuchel. Let's jump on to FST's bet as well for this game. They've gone Chelsea to win the game under 3.5 goals. Werner any time. Everyone. Hat-trick for Werner. Everyone's Hat-trick done it. for Werner. Simple <laughs> as you like. Now on to Leeds versus Leicester City. This game was a really good game between the two sides. 4-1 Leicester came out on top. Jamie Vardy was a man in form. A goal and an assist, but he's going to be missing. What does that do to your bet, Rory? Well, we'll have to have a look here. Um, but I think Leicester are going to be too strong for Leeds. I think that Leicester are an outside tip for the title. And look, I, I, I appreciate that Leeds have done very well this season. They've overachieved and Bielsa deserves a pat on the back. But Leicester are, Leicester are brilliant. And this is the type of game for me where Brendan Rodgers has a plan. Play on the counter-attack, you know, counter in a certain way. Harvey Barnes was fantastic, actually, in the game against Leeds as well. Driving with the ball at his feet, grabbed himself a goal. And I generally think I agree with this. Leicester to win the game. Let's jump over to my bet. Uh, I've gone with more goals, though. I've gone 4.5 goals. I think this is going to be so open. If Leicester can grab the first goal, they've got all that space to play on the counter-attack, and Leeds just aren't going to stop attacking. Uh, Rafinha's in form. Jack Harrison scored that wonderful goal yeah, the outside player. of his left foot. Yeah. Very good player as well. Uh, I think City are going to be you know, using him when he potentially ends his loan spell and moves back there. Let's jump on to three super tips and see what they've gone with. They've gone Leicester to win. Both teams score a Madison any time. Good bet. Now on to West Ham versus Liverpool. David Moyes. This, this is so delicate. I can't actually predict this one anymore because I can't believe what I'm about to say here. But are Liverpool... Are, are, are West Ham favourites going into this game? Is that, it's just wild, isn't it? Well, you've gone with West Ham draw double chance, Rory. So you are thinking that. You know, they, they hit fourth in the Premier League after beating Palace. Thomas Suchek is a man in form since joining West Ham. No player scored more headed goals in the Premier League than his five. They're dangerous from set pieces. They've won their opening six games in a calendar uh, in a yeah. calendar year ever. For the first time? Ever. Like, they, mate, they are on it. And Liverpool are struggling, aren't they? Mm. Liverpool can't score in the league. One player that can score, Mohamed Salah. Looked good against Manchester United. His brace was good. He looked hungry. He looked back to the best. 
I've got him in my bet as well. I've gone Liverpool to win though, Rory. I've gone the other way. There was moments in that game where I thought this Liverpool team is finally playing and I thought the first goal that they scored, the link between Wijnald, well, from you know the back to front, through Wijnaldum, through Firmino, then the through ball to Salah. Great move. But they didn't do that enough. If they can do that enough against West Ham, then they'll win the game. But it's very, very poised this tie. And at 11 to 8, you know, it's you know, it's a it's a bet that could get you over the line with your accumulators. And we've obviously built that for this. Let's take a look at free super tips, bet builder as well, see what they've gone with. They gone West Ham draw, double chance, both teams to score, and Salah anytime. So Salah anytime is maybe one to get on, Rory. Yeah, I mean you can't ever write him off, can you? It's just it's just goals in the guy. Just goals everywhere he goes. And finally, let's touch on Brighton's game with Tottenham Hotspur. If Jose Mourinho was picking any team to pace... For, ugh. And finally, let's touch on Spurs' game with Brighton. If Jose Mourinho had any team to face in the Premier League, he'd pick a team in the bottom half of the league that likes to have possession of the football. Yes, I think this is perfectly suited for a Mourinho masterclass. We hear that term so often, it's often overused. But I feel like this game is perfectly poised for that. This is the one, Rory. Of course, you must have backed Jose Mourinho and Spurs in your bet for this game. <laughs> you've gone with a draw, Harry Kane, any any time. So you, you've you've talked Jose, but you think that Brighton have enough? Yeah, I think Brighton. I think Brighton are going to surprise a few people, okay. including me, by the way. Okay, well they're going to surprise you. <laughs> Seven to one. Uh, Graham Potter's men going to dominate possession. The goal they scored against Leeds United was one of the best in the Premier League this season. Uh, Mope rounding off a really good move. Harry Kane, any time as well. But I've gone completely different. I've gone for the classic FST bet: Spurs to win the game, Kane any time, Son any time. Let's have a look at. FST, have they done that as well? No, they no. haven't. So is not that, that, is that their favourite? That is their bet. Right. I don't know what's going on. Human Son as well, his chance conversion has, has dropped to a, a decent level now. Before it was around like 46, 50%. Now it's around 30, so I think it's sustainable. That's why I went Kane and I went Son. Both teams to score. Can't see that. I think this is going to be a Mourinho masterclass. Mm, yeah, I mean, I, I for, yeah, it seems like I think that as well. <laughs> So there you have it. We have built the bets for game week 21 in the Premier League. Of course, thanks to Rory Jennings for joining us today. You can go and find him on Twitter. Of course, the links will be in the description below to him. And of course, if you follow any of the bets that we have built, please gamble responsibly.